Good evening, everybody. Bonsoir tout le monde. Merci d'avoir uh, être avec nous ce soir. Thanks for being here. If I could have somebody move to open the meeting, please. Oui, Monsieur le maire, je propose d'ouvrir la séance. Merci, la conseillère Smartpenny Father. Je peux avoir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Fini. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. oui. Parfait. L'adoption de l'ordre du jour, s'il vous plaît? Ah oui, Monsieur le maire, je propose d'adopter euh, l'ordre du jour de la séance ordinaire du 25 mars 2024, tel que présenté. Merci, la conseillère Fini. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Yulen. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. oui. Parfait. Merci. Approbation des process verbaux. Uh, oui, M. le maire, je propose d'approuver les procès verbaux des séances du conseil tenu au date suivant. Oh, oh. <rire> excusez-moi. Uh, séance ordinaire du 26 février 2024, séance spéciale du 14 mars 2024. Merci, la conseillère Yulin. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Torres. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui, oui. oui. Parfait, merci. On va aller tout de suite au rapport du maire. We're going to right move right to the report of the mayor. It's a small one this evening. A uh, quick note of a congratulations on behalf of council to our residents who recently participated in the Jeux de Québec. Gabrielle Bell won, uh, won a bronze medal for trampoline in the Lac Saint Louis division, and Yaniv ben Benediva also won. Excuse me, also participated in the uh, trampoline for the Lac Saint Louis region. So congratulations to you both. You make our town proud. A quick update from the ASM. As we mentioned last month, we have taken a firmer position with the City of Montreal. We are ensuring that for every motion, we will raise the issue and vote against every time we cannot justify the benefit to the demerged towns. To ensure that we can never be perceived as being uncooperative, along with the Mayor of Centerville, I will be meeting with the new President of the City of Montreal Executive Committee. Though I am having trouble maintaining my optimism, I will undertake this last-ditch effort. Rest assured, though, that by the end of that meeting, they will know that the status quo is no longer an option. Une brève mise à jour de la part de l'AMB. Euh, comme nous l'avons mentionné le mois dernier, nous avons adopté une position plus ferme vis-à-vis -vis la ville de Montréal. Nous nous assurons que pour chaque motion, nous soulèverons la question et voterons, voterons contre chaque fois que nous ne pourrons pas justifier les avantages pour les villes diffusionnées. Pour nous assurer de ne jamais être perçu comme non coopératif, je rencontrerai avec la mairesse de Seneville le nouveau président du comité exécutif de la ville de Montréal. Bien que mon optimisme ait du mal à se, se maintenir, je, entrent, je entreprendrai cet ultime effort. Soyez assurés qu'à la fin de cette rencontre, ils sauront que le status quo n'est plus une option. Thank you very much. Merci. We're going to move on to the council's reports, starting at seat number two on matters pertaining to public works, communications, and the environment. Councillor Elizabeth Yulin. Thank you very much. Bonsoir à tous. So in public works, public works undertook what we hope is our last snow plow, uh, plowing operation of the season. Uh, but most of the month has had, as you know, record warm temperatures, and that's allowed the team to make road repairs, do asphalting, uh, pothole and pothole filling around town. The good weather also made it possible to clean up the, in the parks, to remove the hockey boards from outdoor rinks, which unfortunately didn't get much use this year, but uh, they went up and they came down, and work on tree maintenance. There was also one leaky valve repaired at the intersection of Gar Garden and Valentine North. Coming up, the notices will be going out for the st uh, spring tree planting program, and the street sweeper will be back on the road early next month. Of interest in the environmental portfolio this month, the new waste management bylaw has come into effect, though the principal elements will only come into force May 1st, those being uh, the restrictions on bin size that you can use and the prohibition of the use of plastic garbage bags on their own outside the bin. But May 1st is coming up, so I urge you to determine if your garbage bin is 240 liters or smaller. And to do that, you can look on the lid for that information, or you can measure your bin's lid, and the compliant bins will have a depth from front to back of uh, 27 inches. The larger uh, non-compliant bins that some of you have out there will have a measurement of about 36 inches, again, from front to back. 
We've also got a couple of sample bins on the porch of the community center, so you can drop by there and see the difference for yourself between a 240 and a 360 bin. Uh, let's see, if you do have the large non-compliant compliant bin, excuse me, you may be eligible for a town rebate of $50 when you purchase a new smaller one. And if you order your new bin through USD Global, uh, which I mentioned in the informer, uh, they'll pick up your old bin and recycle it for uh, a very modest fee. All this info can be found on the website under waste management and as I said, I had an article on my communique in the informer this month about it as well. <coughs> the Environmental Action Committee, or EAC, has been working on various projects this month, like studying municipal wood burning regulations, increasing biodiversity in town, organizing a public field trip to the recycling plant, and various waste reduction and circular economy events. Dans le service de, de communication, les, les efforts ont été concentrés sur le développement d'outils de communication visant à renforcer les messages clés des autres départements, en mettant particulièrement l'accent sur la promotion des événements communautaires, récréatifs et environnementaux. Ensuite, une collaboration avec nos partenaires tels que la ville de Montréal, EXO, et 211 Grand Montréal, a été mise en place afin, afin de développer et de partager des communications efficaces. Une autre initiative a été la création de la page État d'avancement de travaux, offrant aux résidents des images de l'actualité de, du chanté et de chronologie détaillée des travaux accompli. So that's it for my report. I'll be happy to answer your questions during question period. Merci. Thank, thank you very much, Councillor Yulin. Reporting from seat number three on matters pertaining to finance, recreation, and topics related to the status of an age-friendly municipality, Councillor Colleen Feeney. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Bonsoir tout le monde. I'll start off with the finance. The 2023 uh, audit is underway. The pension uh, plan audit will start uh, next month. And the first installment of property taxes were due February the 22nd. Statements of outstanding accounts were sent out the week of March the 8th. Les bureaux administratifs sont fermés le vendredi 29 mars et lundi le 1er avril pour le congé de Pâques. Les bureaux rou rouvriront le mardi 2 avril uh, de 8h30. Later in the meeting, you will hear that we are passing disbursements that were uh, that the town spent, the money the town spent this past month. Uh, the disbursements for the month of March totaled six million. $19,039, that's way above what we usually spend. So I always like to give residents an idea of where their money has gone. 65% of this, or 3.9 million, was for 50% of our annual AGLO share and CMM for the uh, larger municipalities, all the off-island uh, share, plus 10,000 for the Union des Municipalités de Québec. Of the remaining two million, 1.6 million was for the construction of the new recreation center, 230,000 for deductions at source and utilities, 65,000 for insurance, specifically for crime, property, and casualty insurance for the town, 49,000 for garbage, recycling, and compost, uh, vehicles, repairs, and registration, which was about $20,000, was 35,000 all told, and we purchased three photocopiers at the cost, total cost of $17,000, and the rest were all smaller amounts. So we'll move now on to recreation, special events. We had a very special event yesterday. It was the Cottontail Party. And uh, despite the fact that the Easter Bunny had to hide the eggs in the snow, it was a highly successful event with all the tickets sold out. I want to thank you to the students of Villa Maria who helped out. Uh, we have a few other events coming up on Saturday, April the 6th. There's a pub night at the town hall with music by The Other Side of Cool. Tickets are on sale and they're going quickly and this is a fundraiser for the new recreation center. We'll also be having our first outdoor event in Davies Park and this one will be on a Sunday. 
It'll be a pop-up event Sunday, May the 26th, from 10 in the morning to 3. And tables are avail available to rent. You can uh, reserve them through Amelia. We'll have music at that event as well. And this is meant for artists or perhaps organizations who would like to have a table and display what they're doing or their, their wares. On Saturday, May the 4th, we are having an emergency first aid and CPR course for all those of age 16 and over. It's a basic one-day course offering life-saving first aid and CPR skills for workplace and home. And the course, by the way, meets legislation requirements for provincial worker safety and insurance boards and includes the latest guidelines. So you can re register for that online. Uh, les inscriptions pour le printemps se remplissent, mais il reste encore des places disponibles. La plupart des programmes pour enfants et adultes commencent la semaine du 1er avril. Aussi, les inscriptions pour été sont disponibles pour le camp, les programmes d'été du centre communautaire, le camp de tennis et les programmes d'été pour adultes. Les participants peuvent s'inscrire sur Amelia. Pool programming. We're very happy to announce that with the collaboration of Saint, uh, Cote Saint Luke, um, the city of Cote Saint Luke, we have been able to offer our residents uh, access to summer swimming programs. We will have a swim team, a dive team, aquafit, life-saving courses, and master's swimming programming, and it's now available for registration on Amelia, and the early response from residents has been great. So register now to secure your spots in our programming as it is more limited than it what would be usually uh, in, in fact that because it is called St. Luke's Pool, we are only being able to have uh, certain times, so we'll have to limit some of those uh, programs. So uh, I want to actually take this opportunity to thank our fellow community, Coat St. Luke, very much for their collaboration uh, on this with the uh, use of their pool. It is very much appreciated. Camp. Uh, camp registration is ongoing and has been constant, and the response to our 2024 summer plan that was, co that was confirmed has been great. Again, with the collaboration of Cote St. Luke, our camp participants will be swimming daily at their exterior pool, and with the collaboration of the EMSB, our home base this summer will be Royal West Academy. So the outside part will be outside Royal West, and if they have to go in in the rain, it will be inside Royal West. It should be great fun and a safe summer for all participants. Les informations sur tous les événements et les mises à jour ont été ajoutées au site web affiché sur, sur Facebook dans The Informer et les résidents, les résidents peuvent acheter des billets pour les événements ou s'inscrire au programme sur Amelia. Uh, finally, the seniors portfolio. It's been very, very busy. I want to thank Marion uh, and her crew for this. Um, uh, they had a very successful St. Patrick's luncheon on March the 15th and a great lunchtime conversation with the SPVM on the topic of fraud on March the 20th. As well, we have a lot of interesting talks coming up. Uh, here's just a couple of them. One of them uh, will be called Here Comes the Sun. It's a lunch and a lecture, or you can just choose to go the lecture only, by Bruno Stenson, and we will learn about the upcoming solar eclipse. Um, I, this will be held on April the 4th, and I want to specifically note that it's going to be on April the 4th, which is before the eclipse, and not on the 18th as it was incorrectly reported in the informer. So it'll be April the 4th for that lecture. Uh, there's also a tea party on the 24th of April, and then there'll be another uh, discussion, an interesting one that's of uh, very much interest to seniors, do I stay or move? And this is going to be by Marie-Claude Giguer, who's a consultant, and she's also an author, and she helps seniors. So that will be on Friday, April the 19th, at 1 p.m. at the Community Centre. If you want any information on these, you're welcome to call the Community Centre. Another new thing we have coming up as part of our MATA plan, we have a new active walking group. It's going to be held the first Tuesday of the month, and it's going to start this coming month, uh, Tuesday, April the 2nd, with a walk to Mount Royal. The cost is be, will be $5 uh, for members of the 50 plus club and $10 for all others. So uh, again, call the Community Centre if you are interested in registering for that. Et si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas à me poser uh, plus tard ou à m'envoyer un courriel. Merci beaucoup.
Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Feeney. Reporting from seat number four on matters pertaining to urban planning, Councillor Maria Torres. Good evening. Bonsoir à tous. During the last month, the Urban Planning Department issued 33 permits, mostly for renovation and for public domain interventions. Four notices were sent to residents, two for maintenance of buildings, one for non-compliant work, and one for a commercial sign without a permit. One fine was given for work non-compliant to permit. During the above-mentioned period, the Planning Advisory Committee, PAC, met once and reviewed a total of eight files. In April, PAC will meet twice, one on the 3rd and the other one on the 17th. We'll have two meetings. The deadline to submit complete files is two weeks prior to the meeting. The prochain réunion du comité consultatif d'urbanisme aura lieu le 3 et le 17 avril. Les dates limites pour soumettre les dossiers complets sont deux semaines avant la réunion. Uh, this month, uh, on the communique, I wrote an article about that uh, sometimes we have to fell trees on our properties on uh, public domain. And uh, so I specify what cases, in which cases you can do it or not, and sometimes we have to replace them. I didn't have enough space to add two suggestions, which I'm going to give them today. And one of them, as uh, Councillor Eulen mentioned before, we have in the, the, the town has a program, which is a give uh, uh, a tree away program. It costs, last year I think it was $20 plus administration fees. I suppose it's around the, the same. They give you a choice of three trees and uh, they deliver to your house and then you plant it yourself. It's a great way to keep on planting on our part of the house, especially if we have to cut and one down. My second suggestion is something that I'm doing this year. I have a gorgeous apple tree that unfortunately is, uh, has been dying, is at the end of its life cycle. Uh, and we knew this for a few years. So two years ago, I took advantage of one of these trees, planted in, and this year I'm gonna cut down my uh, apple tree, but the other one is beginning to flourish and be ready to take over. So those are my two suggestions. Uh, we always encourage you to plant trees, as many as you can. Uh, and finally, n'oubliez pas que si vous prévoyez d'effectuer de des travaux, vous devez toujours vérifier après du service d'urbanisme si les travaux projetés nécessitent ou non un permis. Et que toutes les demandes de permis et autres autorisations doivent se faire via le site web de la ville. C'est tout pour moi ce soir. Si vous avez des questions ou des commentaires, n'hésitez pas à me contacter au le département d'urbanisme. Merci à tous et bonne soirée. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And finally, from seat number one, reporting on matters pertaining to public security, Councillor Lauren Small Penafather. Bonsoir tout le monde et merci d'être venu ce soir. Um, comme uh, ma collègue a fini à mentionner, il y avait un, une prévention de fraude avec le SPVM qui fait partie de MADA le 20 mars. Donc, on a eu couvrir les topics. Euh, de la de prévention de la fraude, euh, l'arnaque des grands-parents et aussi euh, de la duplication des numéros de téléphone du gouvernement. So, as my colleague, uh, uh, Councillor Feeney, had indicated, we had a MADA meeting on March the 20th, and three of the important topics that I've discussed frequently in my reports were fraud prevention, the grandparent scam, as well as spoofing of government telephone numbers. Um, we are conducting two traffic studies in the town on streets that we have received complaints of speeding where the results will be presented to the, tra the town's community safety committee. Um, and again, unfortunately, we continue to be on the lookout for an individual who continues to steal from um, the inside of cars. Donc, on continue de surveiller la situation avec un individu qui est identifié qui vole à l'intérieur des véhicules qui ne sont pas barrés. Um, we also continue to receive some complaints with regards to four-hour parking and have continued to follow up issuing tickets to vehicles that are found in an infraction. Uh, we have a question actually coming up about that as well that I'll, that I'll answer during question period. Uh, we continue to verify various town parking lots on Northview, Westminster, Strathern and Percival, checking on permits and if the two-hour time limits were being respected um, were applicable. We also have had a few more accumulations of garbage and construction waste. 
Um, and of course, on continue to surveil aussi par rapport des permis pour la construction. So it's important to make sure you have your construction permits, especially with the spring on horizon. There will be a lot of uh, permits, work permits that will be issued for that. And of course, because there continues to be a strike, um, we have more presence at um, Elizabeth Valentine, Edinburgh, and Royal West Academy. À cause de la grève uh, des autobus uh, scolaires, on a uh, on avait plus de, de présence um, au, uh, à l'école secondaire de Royal West et aussi à Edinburgh et Elizabeth Valentine. Um, we were also to advise you that, unfortunately, again, um, crime, is, crime has um, been uh, uh, on Westminster. There's been some criminal activity, unfortunately, where two individuals were dining at a restaurant on Westminster and they had left their purses uh, unintended. They were still at the table and two people walked in to the restaurant and uh, stole their wallets as well as their cell phones. So please be very vigilant if you are um, in an area where you are sitting down at a table, make sure you have your, um, your purses and your valuables always within your, within your line of sight um, because, as I said, the, they're getting to be more sophisticated in, in the crimes that we're having um, in the town. Um, so again, make sure that you're, you know, if you're in a crowded area, that your jackets or your purse are not on the back of your chair, that they're in front of you and you're able to see them at all times. Uh, we also had, again, another theft from inside of a vehicle. Um, where some, some items were stolen from a, from a vehicle, from a residence vehicle. And unfortunately as well, we had um, a report of an unconscious person laying on the ground um, while patrollers had seen there was a person at the intersection of Brock and Northview. And per we thought perhaps the person was involved in an accident. 911 was called. The individual was lying on the road next to their bicycle. The individual is actually known um, in the area and regained consciousness. And then the person seemed intoxicated. Um, therefore, the SPVM dealt with the situation and ensured that the person did get home because they did attempt to get back on their bicycle. Um, and um, so the, the police made sure that the individual did get home safely. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of more tips and tricks like I've done in the past with regards to your valuables. Please remember to lock your car doors and please refrain from leaving valuables in your vehicle. If you see any criminal activity, please call 911 immediately. Also, when in public or crowded areas, um, please ensure that you keep your eye on your belongings. Always carry your purse or backpack close to your body or in front. Make sure all of your pockets on your bag are completely closed. Never leave your personal effects on the bench next to you. Keep your money in a hard to reach place separate from your credit cards. Prepare your money in advance before you go on the bus or enter the subway so you can avoid opening up your purse or your wallet. And carry only the documents you need with you. For example, if you're not driving, don't bring your driver's license with you if you're, if you're going out and, and using public transportation just to minimize any potential impacts if someone does steal your, steal your valuables. So that is my report for this evening. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Councillor Small Penafather. We're going to move now on to the first question period. So during the first question period, uh, we will answer questions from the floor for a maximum of 25 minutes. We will limit you to two questions per person, a short preamble, your first question, and a follow-up question if you want. And I'll remind you that's a question period, not a debate period. After questions from the floor, we will answer questions from residents that have submit, been submitted online until 2 p.m. today on any topic. Same rule applies, 25 minutes total, and two questions per person maximum. In the second question period, we will take questions pertaining to the agenda only, <coughs> submitted via our online website during the meeting. We will limit it to 10 minutes from the floor and 10 minutes online. Uh, lors de notre première période de questions, nous répondrons aux questions de la salle pendant un maximum de 25 minutes. Nous le limiterons à deux questions par personne, une courte préambule, Votre première question est une, que une question de suivi si vous le souhaitez. Et je vous rappelle que c'est une période de questions et non une période de débat. Après les questions de la salle, nous répondrons aux questions des résidents qui avaient été soumis en ligne jusqu'à 14 heures aujourd'hui sur n'importe quel sujet. Les mêmes règles s'appliquent, 25 minutes au total et deux questions par personne maximal, maximum. Lors de la deuxième période de questions, nous répondrons aux questions relatives à l'ordre de jour soumis via notre site web um, lors de cette réunion. 
Nous le limiterons à 10 minutes depuis la salle et 10 minutes pour le online. Et je vous souligne aussi, si vous avez envoyé une question en ligne et vous êtes dans la salle, c'est une ou c'est l'autre. Si vous pouvez demander votre question en personne ou vous pouvez, je peux le lire uh, online. Um, just to let you know, if you submitted questions online and you're in the hall and you're in the room, it's one or the other. So if you want, you just let me know and I won't read the question online or vice versa. So if you have any questions, please stand up, step to the microphone and uh, state your name and address, please. Hi. Hello, Council. Ian Robinson, 143 Valentine. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you're right about uh, the meeting you're going to have with the uh, city uh, supporting the tax protest in the suburban, yeah. So 12% of the citizens pay about 38% of the tax, it seems. Well, it, yeah. it was actually misquoted, Mr. Robinson. Hey, I'm just we <laughs> the 12% uh, of the residents, we pay 38% of the increase. Okay. Overall, those 12% are paying about 18, 19% of okay. the total bill. And it's not right, but I'm yeah. not optimistic for tomorrow, but yeah, we're going to have the meeting yeah, anyway. Yeah. So uh, there's some interesting ideas that are, that are put in here about a tax revolt, you know, the mayor of Hampstead. Mm -hmm. There's a lawsuit by Beaconsfield. And do you entertain possibly notwithstanding your meeting whether we get involved with any of that? Um, the, the path that Beaconsfield has chosen I'm not sure that their path is going to be fruitful. Uh, just the way that they're framing their legal action, I'm not sure that they're, they're going to have success. Um, that's not to say that we, we're closing the door on any legal action. We want to make sure that we have this meeting tomorrow and that they'll know very clearly that, okay, you don't want a thing, but then all bets are off. Sure. Um, what uh, Mayor Levy suggested, I'm not sure that that's my, it's not my favorite thing, Um, but that's not to say that that's not an option as well. Soon as we decide not to pay our agglomeration tax, we will all be put under uh, titul. Uh, that means <laughs> that the government comes in and takes over. Um, not sure that that's the right move. I have yeah. to be honest with you, Mr. Robinson, but to be clear, something needs to be done. Yeah. So, but well, so all, all options are on the table right now. Okay, great. Fine, fine. We'll pick up another day. Yeah, yeah so hopefully. Agree, absolutely. And yeah. hopefully we'll have better news then. Yeah, yeah. that's no problem. Uh, just my last question for uh, Councillor Feeney. Nice to see you back. Hope you're feeling better. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted a small clarification. Um, in your last report of the previous council, uh, there were some items in there about snow cleaning costs and salt and asphalt. And, and I'm sorry, what? Salt and asphalt. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. And I wonder if you'd be so good to try to explain to my simple mind uh, the, the uh, 92,000 of, of uh, snow clearing. What does that compromise? Like, what's that involve? Where does the money go? Okay, I think, in, I, d I don't have my last month's report right with me, but basically this is mainly monies that we are spending, that we are giving to the contractors. We, have, we do some of the snow removal ourselves. Uh, but we also have a certain number of hours that we have uh, maximum, minimum number of hours that we've committed to the various snow clearing companies. Okay. And so if I remember correctly, the 92,000 was just our bills to those particular companies. So they were, they could have gone back, you know, a month or two, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, they were paid in the month of February. Okay. And, and, and the salt and ash, well, that's just some of the supplies, some of the road supplies. We usually put sure. in the same, in the same uh, category, the salt, the ash, right. salt, the rock that they use, etc. Yeah, so, so the town of Montreal West has like an ongoing contract, like the city of Montreal, a minimum amount has to be spent whether we have snow removal or not. Is that, is that we we do have that, but we have it divided by a few uh, other people, and I don't think uh, I, may, I, I may be wrong here, but uh, when we've discussed this in the past, we've never been unable to make our minimum number of hours. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's correct. So yeah. Okay. We haven't lost on it. So that was for the period of nineteenth uh, of January to the nineteenth of February, because your report was last. That's month. when the bills right. were paid. That That's may not have been paid. necessarily when the work was done, because the right. work could have been done and then the bill sent by the uh, contractor a bit later. Okay. It's interesting because during that period there was no snow removal, there okay. was no no snow blowers, there were no dump trucks, there were no graders. So right. yeah, so it's kind of surprising. The month before 
when we had a green Christmas and a green New Year's, which could have been playing football, uh, we had something like 70 some odd thousand mm -hmm. of uh, bills. So it just seems Some of that, that is just timing. Seemed, just some seemed, of that is just the timing of the bills. I know that that could be. And then even when we don't have that a lot, we've been, I think, uh, doing a lot more salting because of the ice this sure. particular year. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for the explanation. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Mr. Robinson. Uh, Greg Bailey at uh, Brock 112 Brock South. I guess it's kind of a follow up on that, that last point there with the talking about that there'd be money left over or their money saved because of the ice clearing. And I saw in the informer that it was suggested that it would go to the arena. Um, but I, I, I just find, I find that almost be the last thing you should put the money on if, since we're paying more taxes for the arena. And there's still a lot of opposition to the arena. I don't think it's really fair that you basically put the extra money into that, so, that so area. And you know, it's, it's, it's also a very, to just put it straight to the arena would be a very uh, regressive tax. And in that's, the sense not, that that's not actually the case. Yeah. What we said was that any money that's not used becomes part of our surplus. Yeah. And then what we do with that surplus, we decide, are we gonna take some of that and pay down some long-term debt? Are we gonna pay down some of the mortgage at the, uh, the rec center? There's a lot of things that goes. It goes into the general surplus. And then we decide what go, where it goes from there. So it's not automatically going to the recreation center. Yeah, because that would just, I mean, that would end up being a regressive tax because it would be, you'd be paying you're paying everybody who's, who's saved the money or whatever or of, of the snow removal is paying that into the arena even though they might have a smaller house or something. Or they're, you know, they're, they're not as big of a, a well, stakeholder then, in the town or whatever. Well, they should, if you they want, if you want to think a, of it that way, then you could also say that the proportion that they have paid into the global budget is also based on how much their evaluation was. So, you know, like if there's $100 left over, and I paid $1 and you paid $1 and she paid $2, well then she's paid twice as much. So it's not really uh, equal that what we've paid. You know, how we spend the money is equal, yeah. but the money that goes into that pot goes by the valuation of our homes. Yeah, but at least the valuation of the home pays a certain higher amount to the arena than something with a lower value of, of, of all, tax. All the money that comes into the town is all based on property values, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to get away from that because I don't think that's necessarily always the right path. Yeah. But uh, that's that's the way it is right now. Okay. My other, uh, my other, it's not. I guess it's not really such a question, so much a question, but just a observation that it, it's become it's become really hard to walk in Montreal West. It's not a very pedestrian friendly town, and it's kind of especially around this corner here because I like I'll come up from Brock South mm -hmm. even to get to to here. I have to I have to wait for two lights to get here now. And before I would just take one, it would just be one one crossing for me. So everything's slowed down a lot. And then I'll go, if I go up to say the pharmacy over here, now we've got the block at the trains, at the train tracks too. We're not, we're not supposed to walk um, on, the, on, on uh, the east side of the, right, yeah, right. the east side of Westminster, right? So now you've got to, you have to go down. Well, usually I'm, I've crossed the street already. So I'll, I'll go down, I have to come down a little south, use that crosswalk that nobody likes to stop at and then go, go across the tracks and then cross again just mm -hmm. to go to that pharmacy or anything mm -hmm. on that side of mm -hmm. Westminster. So it really restricts where I bother to walk if I go just go for a walk in the evening or try to go to the, the store or whatever. That kind of, it's kind of directing me in a certain place. You know, that's a really bad barrier right there because we can't, you can't use that side of the, we can't use the, the corner, right, because of the apartment building, right. Uh, right. which is jutting out into the, the sidewalk the, area. Take the call? Right? You want to take the question? Sure. Yes, sir, sure. Okay, thank you um, for your question. So. Um, we're undertaking, we have a community safety committee, which was rebranded previously was the traffic safety committee. And we're looking at a number of interventions on Westminster. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it's possible that the light that you're making reference to has been, um, has been extended because of the construction that's being done in that area currently. Once the construction is done, perhaps it might go back to being only one cycle versus two cycles of lights. We'll have to look into that a little bit more. The east side of where you can no longer cross where the tracks were, that was done by EXO. That wasn't a town intervention, that, but that was done by EXO, which is responsible for the commuter train. So that wasn't done by the town of Montreal West, but I do understand that there are some safety issues that we're continuing to look at, especially with the increased volumes of traffic that we're looking at because of you know urbanization, densification, and a lot of um, 
like Cote St. Luke, for instance, or NDG that are using that as a throughway um, for coming through the town. So we are looking at a number of interventions that I'll be bringing to, um, to council so we can see some of the things that we might be able to put in place that'll make it safer in terms of walking that particular area, which I know exactly what you're, will, what you're talking about. Will we be about. able to walk around the apartment building corner eventually? Is that gonna, the sidewalk going to go back in there after the... Yes. Because we're going to lose a lane of traffic there, right? Because of the... It's there, narrow, there will narrower. be a sidewalk going back there. The yes. sidewalk could be still go yeah. there? Yeah, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Hi, good evening. My name is Ralph Karawani, and I reside at 42 Shaman Banstead. I'm here representing actually an elder, elderly citizen who happens to be my mother in law and who resides at 162 Bedbrook. And she's resided at this house for over 40 years. Um, I have two questions to share. But first, uh, I just want to take the opportunity to thank members of City Council for their hard work, dedication throughout the approval process of our new sports complex. I don't have the opportunity to, ha to attend many of these meetings due to family obligations, but please do know that many of us uh, that have a very busy family life with kids schedules are delighted and are looking forward to be able to share on travel time <laughs> and expenses when, once the new facility goes up. Um, thank you. Uh, like you, I cherish our community and I volunteer annually to help with soccer coaching with the CRA and various initiatives at Edinburgh School. I'm here today, unfortunately, to express <clears throat> a certain degree of concern and frustration with the current regulations and bylaws in place following application of a permit to, sim to simply replace a white single garage door uh, at 162 Bedbrook. This garage door was necessary to uh, ensure that sh uh, she may use her, her garage in the winter to avoid a slip and fall. We were expecting to complete this work last January, as we assumed this was a simple project to be approved. We did make a mistake, however, with the contractor who assured us that this did not necessarily require a permit, and he had installed many of these similar garage doors in Montreal West. <clears throat> the same type of garage door is actually found on many adjacent homes and behind on Fair Fairfield Crescent and, and Bedbrook. Unfortunately, there seems to be an aesthetic obligation of flat panels versus panels with those little squares that we see just about everywhere. I've made multiple written requests for an exemption and, have, and had to have a brief opportunity to simply address the file with PAC, but to no avail. It's, it seems clear from what I've understood that there is no place for understanding and um, so for some form of compassion, understanding, and empathy for such matters. I've also shared the case with neighbors, friends, and residents in Montreal West, some of whom are actual architects. I can share that there's overwhelming consensus that there seems to be a, 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 a loss of touch with residents. The permit process has become exhausting frustration and frustrating. In short, citizens should feel they have more of a right to invest in their homes without the stress and anxiety currently being, being fostered. My two questions are as follows. One, is the city open to conducting a survey that will specifically address the citizen, our citizens' degree of satisfaction with their permit process? the PAC's performance, and the overall permit application experience from citizens. Number two, can we have a permit process that fosters collaboration and doesn't give us the impression of weaponization of the process against citizens? In short, how can we just apply common sense for a simple garage door for an elderly citizen that just wants to use her garage? So, Mr. Karwani, first off, thank you for um, volunteering for the soccer. Uh, volunteers make our, our town go forward. Um, the first question I'm gonna take that's not something we've ever spoken about. Um, we can take that back to council to see if there's a way where we can get a little bit of feedback from people to see if there's some ways that we can improve the process. Yeah. So that's something that we will have a discussion about. Yeah, I don't okay. know if you, yeah. No commitment, but we will have a discussion about it. And for the second question, I'm gonna let Councillor Torres, who is probably a bit more familiar with the file, answer it. And it may be the kind of thing, I have to be honest with you, Mr. Karawani, in terms of some of the specifics, that may be the kind of thing that you'll take offline with her, but yeah. at the very least, I'll give her, uh, Councillor Torres, a chance to answer you. Certainly, I've certainly tried, and that's why I'm here. I've reached okay. out to Vlad, and was able to get even a, a simple 15-minute Teams meeting, so happy to hear whatever uh, piece of the solution you can, you can provide yeah. again. And when I asked various neighbors, and I'm not going to share with them, they said, hey, we just did it, and just, you know, they were like, just, just do it, it's, it's, your, it's your home. So it's unfortunate because I took the time to inquire if we did need a permit, and you said yes, and I acted in good faith. Unfortunately, again, uh, we were acting on behalf of someone that we went ahead maybe uh, too quickly with the assumption that, hey, it's just a white garage door, uh, and, and paid for it. Um, 
and just trying to find a okay. Okay. common sense solution. So, so just to give a little bit of background, because I don't want anybody to misunderstand the, the process. The process is extremely simple. I believe it was at the beginning of January, mm -hmm. um, we received an application. Uh, it might have been around the 11th of January. On the 19th of January, and the application was very simple. We want to change the garage door to one in white. Yes. So on the 19th of January, PAC reviewed the file mm -hmm. and said, yes, the, 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 uh, we, we recommend changing the door, except that it should be instead of having a colonial style doors, because the house doesn't have that style, it should be a flat panel. They recommend on the aesthetics of the house. Correct. Okay? Which is entirely subjective, uh, and all the other houses are also colonial. Have no, some no not doors. all the other houses are colonial, and you can compare Fairfield, the ones. Fairfield, they're all built uh, on the same. Uh, please let uh, me finish. So, okay. Thank you. so then on the 19th, we bring it to council, like we always do. We agree. At that point, the resolution becomes binding. It is a bylaw. So this is not about a simple detail. This is not about a simple um, aesthetics or pack. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do that it is a legal resolution. We approved it. Now, we have to go back into it and said, you brought a couple of issues afterwards, the safety, the age, the health of your mother-in-law. None of that was presented to us. However, it doesn't make a lot of difference because if there is, the door is dangerous to your mother-in-law, you should be, or someone close to her, making sure that his health is, uh, is, uh, is safe. Our responsibility was to recommend a, a door that it was aesthetically pleasant to the house, and then we agreed. Mm -hmm. Everything else is a legal matter. So the problem with right now is a legal matter, not with PAC. There is no point of going back to PAC. They cannot make another recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do we want to go back every time somebody asks for an exception to go back and have to redo our recommendations? I don't think we, we can do that, to tell you the truth. Because right now it's you, but we have few other residents around town asking for the same reason. Mm -hmm. We would be flooded. Not only that, I do believe that legally we have to respond to Quebec. We have civil codes. We have lo laws in Quebec. We cannot play with bylaws just because we want to do a favor for somebody. We have to stick to our bylaws. What's interesting though, if I understand correctly, you passed a bylaw that forces an opinion into an obligation. We, we so passed a resolution. An, an we approve a resolution, that yeah. The panel should, not must. And the bylaw, what, what you're saying is, is, is the city then took that recommendations. Well, now we're, we're taking a, a, an opinion and we're making an obligation. And that's yeah, it's very that's interesting. Right. And, that's right. and when I actually but that's speak our to, bylaws. And what's interesting is when I actually speak to architects who reside right adjacent, they say that there's, there's, there's no impact on the, on the architectural integrity. It's a garage door and you're putting in a white garage door. I'm leaving it at that. It raises questions on the integrity of the it, process. It, I never said it wasn't simple. No, it was very simple. It the has website, nothing we put to it do in, with the integrity. And, and, and I got the answer. Yeah. What, we're, what we're objecting is on a subjective detail. Mr. Carwani. And I don't want to take more of your time. And, but and, and I appreciate you stating your... Uh, your um, again, you can see there's... and I shared this with many residents. You're, yeah. you're losing touch. You just yeah. listen to what families are saying because it's not, I'm not the only one and, and I've taken time to come here, but it, it, it's not right. It's not I appreciate right. it, Mr. Carwani. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Zara Yaktin. Uh, I'm I sorry, can you repeat your name? I'm sorry. <clears throat> my name is Zara Yaktin. I have my own uh, business in uh, Montreal West since 2022. Yes. And um, I'm a representative of some uh, business owner in uh, building 16 Westminster and 18 Westminster who couldn't uh, participate in this uh, meeting tonight. Regarding to our problem for the parking lot, and uh, because I, I'm talking about my story since 2022, all the time I apply for the permit uh, for the parking lot from the city. Never I had any problem. Since three weeks ago, every week I receive a ticket from the security. And then uh, because you know, we have two, uh, two uh, uh, opportunity as a parking lot. One of them that is uh, a little bit far in Miller Street and uh, most of the time it's full. There is uh, sometimes the 
boat inside or some uh, like a, a kind of machine that uh, I don't know the name. And uh, we have difficulty to find a, a parking lot. So sometimes we need to come and put uh, in the other parking in Miller Street. And I, ca I completely understand why there is a rule for maximum two hours because this area is near the train and most of the people can be used put the car there, take the train, go to downtown and do the business and everything. But what about us that we are here as a resident and uh, owner and uh, it's, you know, all, all the time I cannot leave my client or my business, go down, change the car and I receive uh, the ticket or all the time we have a uh, stress or if I go uh, down, I will uh, visit uh, another uh, uh, ticket on my window right now. I, I have a very tough time right now. Three weeks, I receive three tickets, sixty-four dollar. I don't know if it's not big money for the city. For me, as a single mother, is a big money that uh, it's uh, really make me so uh, so so it, disappointed. I talked to the uh, two guys in uh, uh, like a night shift of uh, public security, and today morning I went to the daytime uh, day shift mm -hmm. both of them they say that just talk to a city it's uh, we are doing our duty they say to us uh, no matter just uh, put the ticket put the ticket go talk to the city that you have a right here and uh, find a solution for All this right. problem so there was the same kind of question is being raised during question period during the online so i'm going to let a counselor a small pen father address it for you please um, thank you. I just want to clarify. Are you Mrs. Amelia Wajewitz? No. no. No, you're not. No. Okay. All right. Um, so it's actually the first time we've heard that, that that particular parking lot has been full. Normally that parking lot has not been full. And we usually the Strathern and Milner parking lot is usually for residents. And we actually had complaints um, about people going over the time limits, which is why the, um, the public security were issuing tickets. But we're certainly happy to look at that and review. So I just want to make sure I understand. You're a merchant on Westminster, yes? Yes, I'm. I'm uh, my business in uh, 16 Westminster. Okay. So um, there were some other parking lots that were identified as well that you could park in that had longer parking. But we can definitely look at the parking situation and see if there's anything that we can do. But council will absolutely discuss it because as um, as the mayor said, talk about something else than the two parking lot in Miller. Or to see if there's a way that we can change the rules for the Stratton lot. So that's yes, what, please, that's what because we, we apply for the permit from the city and put a sticker on the window, and it's not fair to receive again the ticket. And so you're saying that you have the permit, but you're yes, being ticketed. Yes, I have a permit. Uh, permit on my on my window 2022 to 2023 and 2024 and I received three tickets and I really disappointed and I don't know most of us we we think about we need to move our business from uh, Montreal West and you see that little by little Mont unfortunately Mont uh, Montreal West and Westminster start to lose the businesses you know it's not good for the city too but we are suffering you know, one of the big problems now, right now we have for the parking lot and, okay, the visitor, the visitor, they should uh, find a way to manage between one, two hours, but we are the owner of the business. I cannot all the time leave my business, go down and change uh, my car for one, two hours, you know? It's impossible for me. I don't so, know what to do, really. So, yeah. Councillor Small Father said that they're, they're going to look at it in their committee and make a recommendation to council to see if there's something we can do to help alleviate that problem. Okay. okay, but uh, there is no way I can do something for the ticket already received. I, I have to be honest with you. I'd like to have a discussion with public security because I'd like to know if you got a ticket, why if you have uh, a thing. Now, maybe you have a merchant pass and the merchant pass says you can't be parked on the Stratton lot. I don't know that answer. So I'd like to get the information from public court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the administration will do that verification okay. to see what the story is. Thank you is so there. much. Thank, thank you. you thank okay, you. thank you very much for your question. Okay. Uh, Slant Carney, Wolseley North. Actually, I have two items I want to talk about. Well, let's start with the easiest one uh, about plastic bags. Does that apply to schools as well? Because Edinburgh has a lot of plastic bags. It does. Okay. And, and, and businesses. 
and businesses. Mm -hmm. So they'll get bins or something? Yeah. Okay. That was easy. Bis <laughs> well, bins or recycle and compost more. So there's less uh, yeah. in that waste stream. That's no, the because uh, there have been a lot of complaints about uh, squirrels getting into the That's bag. why we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, I read something interesting today which brought something to my attention. And I'll just preface, preface by reading it, and then I'll, <clears throat> I'll tell you why I'm concerned. So this is from uh, Public Safety Canada. It says here, to achieve transparency, an organization must provide information about its activities and governments to stakeholders that is accurate, complete, and made available in a timely way. I bring this up because I was kind of disappointed when I got my tax bill this year, Mrs. Feeney. I'm forced to pay a special tax for the recreation center, but I don't even know how much I'm paying. Usually when I buy something, I know what I'm paying for mm -hmm. and how much. So I'm kind of sort of confused why it was done in such a matter. Secondly, is everybody, as far as property owners, paying the same amount towards the sports recreation center? And how long will we be paying for? Because I remember living with my parents in Montreal, the Olympic tax that, we had to, that they had to pay. At least they had some type of reckoning as to what they were paying and for how long. So I'm just wondering, is it possible to get a year-to-date play-by-play so I'll know exactly how much I'm paying? Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Corney. Um, what you have in this past uh, tax bill, and I, and I think it was spelled out, is about we, are, we have not yet taken out the official loan for the recreation center. Um, we have decided that we actually have a little bit of a cash flow and we set up a special uh, line of credit to be able to borrow on that uh, in the interim until rates go down a little bit. So uh, what we had estimated was the est for, for everybody's tax bill, the, we estimated the amount that we felt the um, based on our contract we would be paying for the recreation center this past year um, and I can't remember I think I have a my, my um, it's a lot the, more than a hundred dollars right uh, you know what I think it ended up being a hundred and 24 something I I, yeah. I actually I, if you'll I, I can look in the the article it's actually, and bit it's actually a lot less than what we said yeah. when we went to our loan buyer. yeah yeah we didn't get to that amount and it's not a special tax it's a tax that's involved in it's all incorporated all in one it's not one that's factored off separately it's a one in a lifetime special tax right because it's, we have to build it it's, it's and a, then it's, the other tax will be for when, using it when we get when well. we get when we get to the point where we're going to our loan bylaw when we're actually going to borrow the money in the long term then it'll be a 40 at Keranta, the, 40 year mm -hmm. it's a 40 year yeah. amortization to pay it off yeah. so right now we haven't repaid back anything we have it paid. says and actually well, it was on the back of your tax bill so I, it was it really was quite transparent there was a there was a, a graph there showing you how much uh, how much was for the Sports and Recreation Center. Um, and it said even in the article in the informer, it should be noted that this amount includes, this increase includes an amount of $194 for the average house for debt related to the new Sports and Re Recreation Center. Um, and um, so that, so it was included there. So $194. Yeah this past year this past year for what was being spent um and um as as the mayor had mentioned based on the referendum the amount we estimated was 430 no it was 
three hundred and three something. I don't remember. What yeah. Hundred. 194 is more than 130, yeah. right? No, 300 yeah. and something. That's yeah, let's see. On the when when the whole when the whole debt is going to be paid, but uh, so this and, it, and it and was what's definitely the average house. Um, right the now, that house? was also in the in the article. It was uh, evaluated at 1.01 1. .01 million or something so like that. So I'm evaluated at 700,000. So if you're paying, so that you were paying less than 194 so this do past I month. So I know exactly how much I was paying. Mm -hmm. You know what our tax rate is? Yes. You can actually go and figure it out very, very easily, so, Mr. Carney. You, you hmm. have another question, Mr. Carney? Because you've answered about, oh, you've asked about you six. Oh, there you go, Mr. Mayor. You're up the old tricks again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Carney. That's why I wanted to bring up the transparency. Yeah. All the information was right there on your tax bill. If you think that you're at 700, it's at 75%. No, but why not? Do I have to do that? No, but we... Mr. Ferry. Hi, Martin Ferry, 456 West Minister. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to uh, the Council for all the hard work they put in. Um, I'd like to address um, permits. Um, and I'm not going to mention the person by name, but they're going to know who they are when I say what I say. It was put to me a month ago that um, I had a house fire at, on Westminster um, back in August. And a month ago, somebody had said to me, all I've done is complain since the fall. I'd like to ask that person what they would do if they lost their house, all their belongings. Their child has nightmares and their significant other gets, has become ill. That's the first thing. Secondly, the permit process is incredibly difficult. Um, it's I have never gone through a house fire before, having to um, demolish a house and rebuild. Um, so we do not have experience in this. So if mistakes are made in, in, in asking for permits or other things, the town has done nothing to help us in any way, to guide us in the right way. I am going to call one person out, Vlad. This person is not an elected member, he's a paid person from Montreal West. And trying to get information or anything out of this person is like pulling teeth. Um, I'm going to mention two things in particular. When we're rebuilding our house, one of the things we had uh, uh, doing is adding an, an, an extra place, uh, a triplex. Common sense by looking at Google Street View can show that our part, our driveway fits three vehicles. This man wasted three and a half weeks of our time to prove that we had to, we had the space for three parking spots when just Google Maps and common sense shows. The second thing, which I have to give council credit for that they amended it, but they wanted a monetary guarantee of $260,000 that we needed to put up. So we're going to reconstruct our house to councils credit that was amended to $50,000. But my question is, why would the town try to take advantage of a situation and ask for the maximum right off the bat? That was another three weeks of wasted time getting it put down to $50,000. I don't understand why the town is not using common sense or is more understanding in such a situation like this. So if I can address uh, that, Mr. Ferrier, and we've had this discussion, yes. you and I, um, the town has a responsibility to ensure that that house gets rebuilt and that it's not just taken down and left down. So that was what the amount was. The idea, please let yes. me finish. Yes. The, the idea was that that money would be used to rebuild that house if for some reason somebody walked away from it in, the case that, in that case. When it was pointed out to us the difficulty that it was causing, we then amended it, and you and I have had that discussion afterwards as well. That's correct. Okay. If, so, if, if I'd like to just rebut that, is, this is not this is not a or, debate no, period. No, it's right, not right. a debate period. Or, it, it, you can right. ask another question if you want to. No worries. But then I'll, it's your I'll, second I'll, question. I'll let you answer the rest of my question. Okay. And the second thing, um, staff members aren't here right now, so it's not fair. You've mentioned it to me now, 
and now you've mentioned it actually in public. I've already mentioned it to the lady who's running our town, our director general here. So she's very well aware, well aware of the situation. And if there's things that she needs to do, she will undertake those things to, to be done as well. But we haven't seen any change. He is still not replying to email. So, so to, for me to ask you back, you've asked this person to look into it. He is still not replying to our email. So when is this person going to look into it? Or if they have looked into it, why has he not okay. changed his behavior? Okay, and then That's I, why I'm here tonight the first and time. Mr. Uh, Ferry, and the last we spoke, you and I, I suggested that if you were still having issues to make sure that I got copied on it, or, and Councillor Torres, one or both of us, so that we could then follow up to see. Okay. So that if you, didn't, if you weren't getting an email, I didn't have to hear about it three weeks later. I could find out and try and get something to move and see what's going on, what, email, what the delay is. I did believe, I think I did both copy on this. Not, email. I haven't seen an email from you yeah, since no. we met. Yeah, I did receive yeah. it. Can I say something? Please, um, go ahead, Councillor Torres. Um, your experience have been extremely difficult and I think we all understand. And uh, we, 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 believe me, it, it is a constant topic of conversation. However, we've never had to deal with this issue that I know of a house burning down where we had to demolish and all that. So it has been a learning experience for us too. We have to go by the law, trying to learn the law and try to follow it. Um, there has been a lot of mistakes and a lot of times have been misunderstandings because there are too many people involved in this group from your side and our side. Um, and sometimes Vlad, maybe he's not answering. I, I don't know why, maybe he, there is nothing to answer. I do know that since the last meeting, uh, we told you that the, the, your file was going to present it to PAC, which was last Thursday, and then that today is, is up for approval or not, and uh, whatever conditions come along with it. And uh, I, I do believe he let you know that. In between, it might not be co uh, communication because there is no time. But if we tell you there's going to be on Thursday and then on Monday, there is nothing in between unless you have a special question to ask. However, I want to reiterate and I want to say something because I did say it to cancel. The person who said that you were complaining too much, it was myself. I don't want Vlad to take uh, a fault oh, for that. I, I was going to call you out. It's just I know, but I did it and I tell everybody I'm very open. I lost my temper first time I've done it in 11 years. And I'm very, but it's a very emotional case, I have to tell you, from your side and from our side as well. So I, once again, I apologize. But uh, if you stay till the end, we'll read your, your, your file. And then if you have questions, please stay after and I'll be happy to answer. One, one last thing. I hope this doesn't happen to anybody else in the future. Yeah. But if it does, I just hope that we have learned from mm -hmm. all our mistakes and it won't be as hard on, on the next person. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yes, Cynthia Nichols, 25 West Minister South. Um, it's interesting that he brought that up. I went to the town hall over here, the administration door. I left a message for Vlad to contact um, after the, the last time that we met at the courthouse. Um, I spoke with you at the last council meeting asking for a meeting with him and I specified that I did not want to meet with him alone. I wanted to bring uh, the person who is involved in rebuilding that kind of a thing and with the pack and I, I don't know, maybe you would be there perhaps. And then I came back and I left another message and I still have not heard from Vlad. So it's been Can, close yeah. to two and a half months can like I talk can you say after and I'll talk to you because this is just a very special case uh, you're, you're you know like all of you is is this one not no all just have them just have an appointment made and I'll be there I can make my schedule flexible I can reroute things okay. um, just <laughs> make an appointment and uh, have me okay be there I did, if you can give me your email Not early address. in the morning, though. No, 8 o'clock is okay. way too early. <laughs> okay. Give me That's your it. email Simple. address. That's all I need so I can send you information. You should have it yeah. on the town list. Uh, I, I, I receive emails every couple of weeks yeah. about what's going on. Received one yesterday saying there's a council meeting today. Okay. Or was it yesterday? Yeah. 
might have been yesterday or today, actually. One of the two. So they cleaned up. I, haven't, I can't even explain to you how lovely that is, to be able to not have cement dust. My boots, they're not so bad when I walk around this corner. It's, not, it's, it's the constant cleaning. It's the cement dust. It's, the, it's been a nightmare for five years. And I don't know if you understand just how bad it has been. But for us living here, it has been. And as far as parking's concerned, we have um, designated times, not from 6 o'clock until 9 o'clock, no parking in the morning. From 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock, it's very, very visible on Westminster, and yet these guys continually park there, even though there's parking here at the town hall, there's parking all, all here, they've got this street blocked off most of the time, yet they continue to park there. So I don't understand what that is, but I leave it to you. Thank you, you very much, ma'am. All right, so we're gonna move on to the questions that were uh, submitted online today. Uh, sorry, I just seem to have lost it here. Give me one second. <coughs> All right, first question comes to us from Eileen O'Reilly, 139 Percival. Can you please clarify what the various paint marks on the trees signify? I called Public Works a week ago to ask what the orange blotch sprayed on the middle, um, excuse me, on the uh, maple tree in front of our house meant, but they have not yet returned my call. When the, will the town notify us when trimming or removal will take place? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Eulen, please. Sure. Thanks for your question, Eileen. Uh, what that means is it requires an arborist to come and have a look at it. So that's what it It doesn't mean that it's going to be cut down or even trimmed. It means it needs an evaluation, and it, it, that's the identifier for it. So uh, that's what it means on your maple tree, and then uh, you would be notified if uh, they're going to have to do some uh, felling of the tree if there's something wrong with it. But uh, for now, all it means is it needs an inspection. Thanks for your question. Thank you, Councillor Eulen. Thank you for your question. Um, next question, it's actually two different people ask the same basically the same question. Harold Knowles at 256 Percival. Concerning the dispute with the City of Montreal about the method of evaluating the tax amounts transferred from non-merged municipalities to the City of Montreal, i.e. by property evaluations for shared services, which level of government has the final call, the provincial government or the City of Montreal, or is it decided by the courts? And similarly, Brian Benedetti on 22 Brock South, I've noted the possibility of a tax protest of the agglomeration tax by the ASM. What is the position of council on this matter? Is there a plan to informally poll the taxpayers on this issue? So the first question, Mr. Knowles, this is basically the uh, municipalities are creatures of the provincial government. So at the end of the story, the provincial government would have to um, weigh in or authorize any kind of change in the, the regulations between Montreal and the demerged municipalities. Uh, the provincial government has already told us they will not weigh in and judge anything. They said they are leaving it to us to um, come up with some kind of a, a new deal that they will then bless um, for whatever that's worth. Um, from, in terms of Mr. Benedetti's questions, yes, the ASM is also considering um, more strenuous matters, or excuse me, more strenuous ways to uh, protest our um, tax situation with the city of Montreal. But the reality is, is that the city of Montreal has absolutely no financial incentive to uh, give the demerged municipalities an extra dollar. And I think everybody on council, I think everybody in the town is pretty much on that same page. Uh, thank you for your questions. The next question comes from Linda Hammerschmidt, 256, excuse me, 226 Ballantyne North. As the, do as the doggy swim was so popular last August, is it possible to inquire if Cote St. Luke would offer a similar event at the end of their outdoor pool season? Councillor uh, Feeney, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Linda, for your question. Um, we can inquire, I guess is what I can say. Uh, of course, I, as I say, I'm very gracious, very thankful that they are uh, letting us use their pool. I think at the moment they don't have a doggy swim at the end of the year. So uh, we can ask them and tell them it was popular with us, but certainly it's their decision to make. But uh, we will inquire about it. Thank you for your question. 
Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. Next question from Jennifer Melnick, 140 Ballantyne South. My question is regarding the redevelopment of Avon Westminster Corner. Now that that construction barriers have been removed from in front of the condos, it's visible that the building has very little setback. The artist rendering of the area has a lot of greenery and trees. I know it was mentioned that there was a plan in works for redoing the sidewalks and road in that section. Has it been done? And if yes, is it possible to share the design on the town site? Are we losing a lane of traffic where there's greenery supposed to, where the where is the greenery supposed to fit? So in answer to your question, Ms. Melnick, the finalized plans have not been undertaken. What you've seen are, I think, uh, just artist renderings that were made by the promoters of the site. Um, at one point, we spoke about many different things, about um, bump outs to make the, the corner uh, more secure to, to cross, but we have not finalized any kind of plans at all. And that will, when the work is finished over there, and we undertake a study to see what the proper options may be, and we usually give that kind of a study over to uh, traffic engineers to determine what's right for us there. So nothing's been done yet. Thank you for your question. Uh, next question comes from Nicholas Curtis, um, 74 East, and similar to the question the lady asked before, can the city look to give residents and business businesses a permit to use the parking lot at Strather North and Milner? The permit parking available in the other parking lot at Percival and Milner is usually full. The current blitz to ticket this parking, though understandable for people utilizing it as a commuter lot for the train, is causing undue tickets to, the, to be given to employees of Westminster businesses. Haven't, haven't the businesses suffered enough? There are lease and for sale signs up and down Westminster. Um, Councillor Small, Penafather, please. Uh, thank you for your question, Mr. Curtis. And obviously this is related to, I guess, a, another um, uh, merchant on Westminster who uh, posed a similar question earlier during the session. Um, it's definitely something that we're going to take a look at, but as I said, there were particular parking lots that have been um, identified so that residents would be able to have easy access to Westminster, but we can look at the configuration of all the parking lots that are have been identified in that area with regards to um, West for the overflow of traffic that need, overflow of parking that needs to take place that's not on Westminster, but we will look at that and um, get back to you. So thank you for raising your question. Thank you very much, Councillor Small and Father. Next question comes from Aline Doiron, 237 Strather North. I am inquiring if the small park by the tennis court will be open this spring. As one of the only gated parks, I don't see why it is actually closed for construction. Thanks. Councillor Feeney, please. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Dorian, for your question. Um, yeah, I brought this up with the recreation. It was closed, of course, for safety reasons. We were concerned with the amount of trucks that were going to be circulating for the construction of the recreation centre that this could cause a problem. However, they've agreed that we will look at it again, and if, if it looks like there are no safety issues, we can consider uh, opening it up. So thank you for your question. Thank you, Councillor Feeney. Last question comes from um, Emilia Wojtowicz, 156 Westminster. My neighbor from 158 Westminster replaces the glass brick with regular windows. According to my knowledge, he has only three and a half feet of land between our properties. I addressed this issue to the city inspector and he replied that my neighbor asked for a permit. My question is when the regulations have been changed as before, the required minimal distance was five feet. And second question concerns my neighbor at 154 Westminster. He places his garbage for two years in front of all in front of our properties all week long. This attracts rats. I have debris in my front yard and it's in the street. So for the first part, I'm going to ask Councillor Torres to answer. And the second part, I'm going to leave to Councillor Smallpen and Father, please. <coughs> yes, thank you for your question. You're right. The property owner of 158 uh, asked and received a permit to change his windows. Used to be block windows. Now it's a translucent or glass uh, windows. Um, they got the permit, right? So your question is, and I assume you're concerned that the being a, a, a window that is located uh, on the side of the house that is close to your house, and you say that the distance between his, the lateral setback on his house is 3.5. Um, although we give the permit for the windows, when it comes to uh, illegal views or, uh, or the distance between the windows and the, 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 the borderline, this is is in the civil code, not with our bylaws. And the civil code states that you need to have 
if you have less than one meter point five from your house to the uh, border of your house, uh, and you have a window, you have to uh, put a screen on the window. You're allowed to have the window, but you have to put a screen. That means that the window might be frosted, or you have to put blinds, or you have to put uh, uh, curtains. However, this is not an issue for the town. It is in the civil code. What we're going to do, and the person who's responsible for it, is the owner of the house, not the town. So what we're going to do is Vlad uh, is going to speak to the owner of the house to remind them that he is responsible to make sure that uh, there is not an illegal view from their house to your house. But they were completely allowed to do it, to build the, the, the window. And as I said, um, the, the fact that it's a setback of 1.5 is completely allowable. Thank you for your question. If you have any questions, please write me back and I'll, have, uh, I'll be happy to expand on it. Thank you, Councillor Torres. Councillor Smallpin, the father, please. Yes, thank you for your uh, question with regards to the garbage, Mrs. Watowitz. Um, you're right, there, are, there is a bylaw that exists under 4.2.13 and 14, and that is there's supposed to be um, a certain amount of distance between your garbage bins, your recycle bins, um, and your composting bins from the street. Um, there have been a few complaints that we've received, so we will ask the public security has in the past done some awareness campaigns with regards to where the bins are supposed to be placed in relation to when you don't have garbage pickup and what happens after garbage compost and recycling pickup. And we'll make sure that uh, we, we create a bit of an aware, awareness around that so that people do make sure that their bins are appropriately placed um, when they're not put out for, uh, for pickup day. Thank you for raising that question. Thank you, Councillor Small Panda Father, and that's the end of public question period. So we're going to move back to the agenda now. Um, we're, now we're going to administration and finances, approval of disbursements for February 24th to March 22nd, 2024. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I move that the list of accounts payable from February 24th to March 22nd, 2024, totaling $6,019,000. $39.82 be approved and paid as listed. Thank you, Councillor Feeney. A seconder, please. I second the motion, Mr. Mayor. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Délégation de pouvoir pour le mois de mars 2024, s'il vous plaît. Uh, oui, je propose d'approuver uh, le rapport de la directrice générale concernant l'exercice de pouvoir délégué en vertu de règlement numéro 2005-002. Pour le mois de mars uh, 2024. Merci, la conseillère um, Yulin. Désolé. Et je peux avoir de l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Torres, tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Thank you very much. Recreation and culture grant applications. I move one that the town of Montreal West apply to the following granting organizations through the applicable program Veterans Affairs Canada, Community Engagement Funding, CPRA, Canadian Parks and Recreation Association. Green Jobs Initiative. Two, that the signature of these applications by Ms. Marion Scully, Culture and Special Events Coordinator, be approved. Thank you very much, Councillor Small Father. Can I have a seconder, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I second that. Thank you, Councillor Feeney. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Urban Department Site Planning Projects and Architectural Integration Program. I move to acknowledge receipt of the minutes of a meeting held by the Planning Advisory Committee PAC on March 20, 2024. To approve as presented under the SPIP the following plan submitted to this meeting in accordance with the recommendations of the PAC as outlined in the minutes. 217 Bedbrook, replacement of two windows and addition of a new window on the attic space. 141 Brock South, recapping of front landing and stairs. 24 Fenwick, replacement of two attic windows. To approve with conditions under the SPIP the following plan submitted to the meeting in accordance with the recommendations of the PAC as outlined in the minutes. 190 Bedbrook, replacement of the front door and garage door. 227 Westminster North, replacement of two doors and six windows. 325 Brook North, replacement of the front door. 158A, 158C, replacement of two glass blocks opening with windows. Oh, that was some Westminster, I'm sorry. And the last one is 456458, reconstruction of the main building due to fire 
456458 Westminster North, reconstruction of the main building due to fire. And last, to defer the examination of the following plans to the next meeting of the Council in accordance with the recommendations of the PAC as outlined in the minutes. 151 Valentine North, replacement of bricks for the new extension project. 141 Brook South, replacement of the railings. And 456458 Westminster North, new garage door. Thank you very much. Councillor Torres can have a seconder, please. I second the motion. Thank you, Councillor Small Pendafather. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the next one is approval for, of a first draft bylaw and fixing of the date of a public consultation meeting, bylaw concerning amend, amendment to zoning bylaw 2020-002 in order to rectify a clerical mistake with respect to lot width, to reduce the maximum floor area for uses in Class C1, to modify the applicable provisions for occupancy by certain vulnerable uses of a land located within 75 or 30 meters from a railway track, to modify rela uh, provisions related to heat pumps, heating, cooling, and ventilation equipment, and to modify provisions related to landscaping between a parking area or driveway and a walkway, and to a maximum width for a walkway. I move, um, one, to approve the first draft bylaw quoted in title of this resolution, and two, to convene a public consultation meeting on this draft bylaw on April the 11th at 6 p.m., um, place to be determined. Thank you. It's 6, 6, 6 p.m. 6, 6. Thank you very much. Yes. Councillor Small Pendafather, can I have a seconder, please? I second it. Thank you very much. Councillor Torres, all in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you very much. Uh, next is uh, to uh, a motion to calling on the government to increase federal funding for infrastructure uh, work. Mr. Mayor, whereas Canada is experiencing record population growth, having welcomed 1.25 million Canadian, new Canadians last year alone, whereas according to the Can Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, at least 3.5 million additional homes must be built by 2030, and municipalities need to build or expand the infrastructure to accommodate this growth. Whereas the Federal of Canadian Municipalities, FCM, excuse me, Federation of Canadian Mis Municipalities, FCM, has estimated that the cost of, the, of municipal infrastructure required to support housing and development is on average in the range of $107,000 per unit. Whereas, according to Statistics Canada, the cost of upgrading existing municipal infrastructure so that it's in a state of good repair is in the range of one, uh, $170 billion. Whereas, non-residential construction price inflation has risen by 29% since the end of 2020, and municipalities are facing soaring costs for infrastructure projects without corresponding growth in revenue. Whereas, unlike federal and provincial revenue, municipal tax revenue has not increased in recent years along with inflation, economic growth, and population growth. Whereas, municipalities are facing a gap in federal infrastructure funding as the 10-year invest Investing in Canada infrastructure program has come to an end. The Canadian Community Building Fund is being negotiated and the Permanent Public Transit Fund is set to start in 2026. Where is, excuse me, whereas the Canada Community Building Fund, CCBF, which was formerly known as the Federal Gas Tax Fund, provides more than $2 billion in annual capital funding directly to municipalities through a predictable allocation, excuse me, predictable allocation mechanism, and municipalities of all sizes use the CCBF to deliver direct results to Canadians by building and renewing critical core public infrastructure, including water infrastructure, local roads, public transit, and community cultural and recreation facilities. Therefore, I move that the town request that the federal government work with provincial and territorial governments as well as with other stakeholders and municipalities to maintain the CCBF as a source of direct, predictable, and long-term funding for local infrastructure priorities. Secondly, that the town also request that the federal government commit in budget 2024 to the next generation of infrastructure programs, including a new program for water and wastewater infrastructure and an increase in the disaster mitigation and adaptation fund. And thirdly, that the town request 
that the federal government convene provinces, territories, and municipalities to negotiate a municipal growth framework work to recognize the way municipalities are funded in order to enable Canada's long-term growth. Thank you very much. Councillor Yulin can have a seconder, please. I second it. Thank you, Councillor Torres. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Thank you. We're moving on to notice a motion and reading of, uh, and adoption of bylaws. Avis de motion. Uh, I hear, je donne avis de motion de la présentation à une prochaine séance de conseil d'un règlement intitulé Règlement amendant le règlement de zonage 2020-002 afin de corriger une erreur cléricale au niveau de la largeur des lots, diminuer la superficie maximale des usages de la classe C1, modifier les dispositions en matière d'occupation par certains usages sensibles à moins de 75 ou 30 mètres d'une voie ferrée principale, les dispositions sur les thermopompes et appareils de chauffage, climatisation et ventilation, et les règles sur l'aménagement paysager entre une aire de stationnement ou allée de circulation et une allée piétonne, ainsi que la largeur maximale de cette dernière. Euh, un avis, un projet de règlement fut déposé au Conseil et mis à la disposition du public. That's just giving notice of motion that for that council, for that uh, public consultation that we'll have on April 11th, this is the, no the notice of motion for the uh, bylaw that we will pass. Um, we have a second question period. You're more than welcome to step up to the microphone, ask anything that was on the agenda today, and then we can go from there. I see nothing was submitted online. And that's it. Okay, if I could have move, somebody move to close the meeting, please. Oui, Monsieur le maire. Je propose de lever la séance. Merci, la conseillère Torres. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît. Oui, je l'appuie.